who is that? One of the officers asked, it is this dog, Zake. I had thought that maybe this is the person I would be asking for help from because I asked him, please help me. He really didn't. And I had a word in Runyankole saying, And uh, what did Nunyang call it? Something like... But it meant that you're now just farting, but you'll soon defecate. Something like... Was a nyampa and something like that. I was hearing something of that kind because I can listen to the language, though I cannot speak it. They stopped on my head with their boots. Beating started from their compound. They put, they dragged me downstairs. The echoes I had made me feel that now this is a very huge building. They put me down on the floor. They began cleaning. Countrymen and women. I want to first thank God for all the Ugandan's lives, including mine, that at least today, God has given me yet another chance to be breathing. I thank all the people who have been praying for me, and please, I urge that you really continue pray, praying for, for me, because so far now, I'm feeling much better each and every day I'm feeling much better. So I felt like this is the time for me to share my story. I know you've been wondering what must have happened about me. So this is the time for me to share my story. I want to, of 19th April, I was in the Mutiana municipality. That's Mitiana district at my home, known as Busuabulongo. And on that day, I want to let you know that I kept home the whole day. Though previously, I'd bought some food stuffs, and that was rice and sugar. I did that while having it in mind that my people in Mitiana municipality, my constituents, are really starving because they kept on coming to my gate, especially mothers and their children, and obviously men. And these people are genuinely starving and they did not have anything to eat at home. So being a charitable leader, and I'm actually known about that in Michiana municipality. And my family, even before I was born, my family used to do that. So I thought that it was prudent to really care about my people, but also to put in mind that I have to obey the regulations of public health. I really did everything having that in mind because I knew that if I do not, really, I would be putting my people at risk. Since I, I love Mitiana people, I love them so much. There's no way how I would see any kind of victim of the COVID-19 problem we have in the world. Friends, I want to let you know that I packed those foodstuffs on that day of 19th with some of my household workers. Yeah, they took me pictures with them within my compound, as I've told you. I never went out of my compound that very day of 19th of April 2020. After packing those foodstuffs, one of my household workers called some of our border border riders 
who participated in the distribution of those foodstuffs. But I really want them to make sure that they do not gather people. I told them to do it house per house. And I know those people being part of my coordinators, I'm sure they will not disobey me. And when they did that, they were able to send me a few pictures on my phone. By 2 p.m., I was having those pictures. I really looked at them and they really obeyed what I told them. I want to read that I posted those pictures on my social, all my social media pages. I posted those pictures. Reason being, I wanted to demonstrate that as a leader, I can really help my people without thieving from the poor. Remember, I had written a letter to Parliament to make sure that they do not put 20 million Ugandan shillings on my account, of which they put a stamp on my letter later on. And I'm sure they never did, at least because I talked to the speaker the pre previously on, uh, on Friday, yeah, before the day of 19th. I want to let you know that uh, that day I felt so happy that I had given out to some of my people, especially my immediate neighbors in Usaburongo. I gave them something. I feel so happy whenever I give out because really I think my family is made for that because for us we believe in sharing the little we have. Comrades, at around 7 p.m. while I was in my bedroom, I had patrol cars coming to our place. I was informed that these people jumped over the fence of my house. There were so many that no one was able to count them because they came with several cars. And these people included police, policemen, they included the military, the UPDF, and the people who were not in uniform. As I was in my bedroom, I had bangs of doors, I had voices, I had that kind of uh, shouting. I was able to put on my clothes since that I was in my bedroom and I was having a shower. As I was like get, putting on my clothes, actually getting done, I had a very huge bang on my bedroom door and that was the RPC of Mediana in my bedroom. I really saw a very big crack on my bedroom door. I was very, very surprised to see RPC doing such a thing. Just even before I would ask him anything, he held me by my trousers violently. I really asked him, really? Mr. Kagarula Bob, why are you handling me in this manner? What have I done? He silenced me by putting handcuffs on, on my hands. I was like, but I'm not violent in any way. Please, do not hold my trousers like that. Well, I'm not a chicken thief. It was like, don't tell me anything. For your own information, I'm a PhD holder. For you just studied from a very cheap university and you know nothing. I felt so bad seeing so many soldiers in my house turning everything of mine in the house upside down. I asked after seeing the deep still also in the house because I know him by the names of Alex Muine Mukono. Asked him now, 
do people have a such warrant to do such a thing in my house while I'm on handcuffs? They're like, we do not need that. It's like, did you inform Parliament about what you're doing right now? We do not need all of that. They started pushing me with their guns out of my house. Getting out, I saw very many soldiers in my compound. I have a very huge compound at home. And these people were really so harsh, speaking with arrogance. I really smiled and laughed, like this is unbelievable. How, how can you behave like this? They're like, so, Zaki, you're trying to resist arrest. I was like, come on, I cannot see my people starving, yet I, I need these people, and these people really need me, and they love me so much. I got into the car, all that was captured, and I know it was in the public domain, I'm very sure. They put me in their double cabin car, with several other police trucks I saw. I want to remind you that in my, in my house, I had a tune of 15 million Ukrainian shillings, which was taken by those people, informed to me by my wife, that these people, after taking me to police, they came back still and they messed up the whole house. The, bed, the bedroom, where the money was, the phone, and also the whole of the sitting room, everything was messed up. And they were telling everyone as they were looking for food. Disappointingly, they didn't find anything. But I'm wondering why they took that money. Reaching at the police station of Mitiana in the compound, well, still at, with handcuffs on my hands, because I was seated in between the Arab, the Arab PC, Bob, the, 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 the Arab PC is called Muine Alex, the Arab PC is called uh, Kagalula Bob, yes. Then the DPC sat in front, and that is the Bob, that is the Muin Alex Mukono. So for me, I sat in between another person who was not in uniform, and then the RPC. Before I reached the police station, I remember very well those people telling me, Now we have you in our hands, and there is nothing now you can do. We are going to really show you something you've never experienced in my life. Really, I never believed that at first. But later on, I really faced whatever they told me. So, at the police station, they just dragged me out of the car, up to their offices. And that office belonged to the DPC. Reaching that office, as they began with the beatings in the car, that's what they did immediately reaching the office of the DPC, Mitiana. They kicked me, slapped me, punched me by people who were in, in, in uniform, and some of them were not in uniform who were doing that. But all the beatings were initiated by the RPC. Kagadula Bob and also he punched me on my mouth and the, I started breathing right away and also Mr. Muine Mukono he kicked me and I had to fall down still while I'm handicapped in his office. They told me that how can how can a useless person like you who cannot even be a class monitor, later a member of parliament, 
think that you can really fight President Museveni. Comrades, I want to assure you that there was nothing which these officers in, within their offices talked about distributing foodstuffs. They never talked about that within that office. As I was asking them why all, all that was done to me, that really was boosting the beatings, the kicks, the punches, the slaps by the different people whom I did not know, but at least I knew those two, the RPC and the DPC. These people bundled me up and put me into their cell of Mitiana Police Station. Reaching that cell, I realized that the cell was so tiny and dark. It had over 20 people. But reaching that cell, I realized there was a woman. And I was very surprised to see a woman with men in the same cell. I picked interest in her. She really narrated her ordeal to me. Did these other men in the cell. I realized that these people were there for over three weeks straight on maize seeds for all that time. This people informed me how most of them were HIV positive, but they were never given medicine, the ARVs. Really, that annoyed me so much. But I was like, you guys, keep calm. I think when I'm out of here, since I'm your leader, I'll be able to at least talk about these things. That was within like, I think, 20 to 30 minutes, if I can remember so well. This, these people came back to the door of that cell. They requested me. They were barking at me. Zake, come out. I was trying to come. These other people in the cell started shouting on top of their voices, Tulina way, Tulina way, Tulina way. People power, people power. I think this annoyed the officers. And I saw the DPC there, the RPC, and many other soldiers. All officers, they tear gassed that small cell. It was tear gassed. Everyone was groaning in the cell, trying to shed tears in the cell, including myself. They were able to pick me up amongst the many, dragged me, kicked me, did all sorts of things, and took me to the waiting many patrol cars and the compound. Reaching there, I vividly saw, I, I vividly, I vividly saw the RPC telling the officers, please, and he said that in Runyankole, please make sure, make sure he does not see. They got some small bottles I was seeing, they put them direct in my eyes for some time till when I would hear him shaking, I would hear the person shaking and putting and then put another down, I had it being dropped and then put another one in my eyes. I thought maybe it is pepper spray because it was really so painful, so itching. I cried a lot, I shouted. I was like, please forgive me, please forgive me. They would not hear, they would not really listen to me. I thought maybe it is pepper spray and thought maybe after some time I would see again. But comrades up to now, 
I can hardly see. Though the doctors, the opticians, they are trying to work upon this. That's why I'm having these glasses to come to the light. They tied me. They put two handcuffs and uh, two handcuffs this side to make it fall on my father's parts. It was very also painful. They tied me with ropes and they joined both ends of the ropes to put me behind the police truck. There is that back side of the truck or the police truck of the double cabin where the policemen sit but there is that space in between. It is actually triangular tri 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 in nature. They made sure that I was suspended and hanged without actually leaning against both ends of the metals and also not touching down the metallic ground of that truck. And that was done with insults, abusing me, how I'm very dense, how I should thank President Museven for making a, a useless person like me a member of parliament that I should be appreciative of him. So many other insults were told to me. I had several cars starting. I think there were over four, if I'm not mistaken. They drove me at a very terrible speed. We never would come across the, the road bumps. My body would swing on the sides of the metals. It was so hurting. And whenever they reached the potholes, I would, I would slightly like get up and down while my back, since I was facing up while my back was really touching the metallic floor of the truck. It was so painful. Countrymen and women have never felt that pain before in my life. I groaned. I asked for help. These people were only inflicting more pain with sticks with their guns and their boots stepping on me. I felt so numb within my limbs my legs, my hands, it was so painful, so much. I cried than ever before I've ever done, not even the Alua. Up to now, whenever I remember that pain, it really gets back to me. It was very painful, a lot. They took me for about two hours reached at the, at the gate which I had. The gates opened so fast. Asked, who is that? One of the officers asked, it is this dog, Zake. I had thought that maybe this is the person I would be asking for help from because I asked him, please help me. He really didn't and I had a word in Lunyankole say, and a word in Lunyankole, something like, but it meant that you're now just farting, but you'll soon defecate. Something like, was a nyampa, and something like that. I was hearing something of that kind because I can listen to the language though I cannot speak it. It was very disappointing because I had thought maybe I would reached a police station where at least I will be put in maybe in a place with dignity and not inflicting more pain. These people within the compound while still on handcuffs, after untying me, they really forced me that I should walk. Something which I could not do. 
I fell down. They stopped on my head with their boots. Beating started from their compound. They put, they dragged me downstairs. The echoes I had made me feel that now this is a very huge building. They put me down. On the floor, they began killing me to the extent that I was not even now not feeling anything since my hands were already numb and still hand handcuffed. I could not feel my limbs, the, 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 the legs. That was the time they really telling me that I'm, a, I'm just a shitter. And they said that in Lunyankule still mazim was something like that. That you ever become a president. But trust me, you should be aware from today that this country has its owners. And you people, you're not part of the owners of this country in Museven. Those people, whenever I would say anything, it really added more pain on me. There is something I felt like a stick I have on my chest, my back, which they kicked so much, and my legs, as I will show you everything on my body. The sides of my tummy, they told me that Zake, you should know that Colleagues, I want to tell you that in that room, they never talked about distribution of food at all. I was never beaten for distributing food because it was not talked about anywhere within even that room. It was never done. It was a lot of pain. These people really put a lot of threats to me. In my whole life, I've never experienced tribal statements like which I felt in that room. And most, and a few words were said, like 10% in Luganda, and they were mocking me. They even reminded me one time, a few weeks before we lost Ritanabu Kenya and Dani Chayune. That is okay. We had you crying out to the cat, to the katikilo to tell the kabaka to say a word about the killings happening on Ugandas, that so that they can stop at least within Uganda and other areas. So, where is your kabaka here to help you? Where is your katikilo to help you? You people, this country doesn't belong to you, and you should know that. It is high time you quit politics. And spit on other things. One man came and stepped so hard on my head and he told me in Luganda to repeat after him as he was beginning to tell me those words which I should repeat after him. <laughs> I started hesitating that caught him more kicks on my lower back beside which still hurts up to now. I want to assure you that I was only fighting for my life. I had to say everything without telling me. Zake, Nangamagamba Zake, Okuvanolo Alelo, Titwagala Kudam Kulava, Ngo Wakanya. President, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, 
Yoweli Kaguta Museven, the Honorable. They told me never to also talk about and oppose the First Lady, Janet Kataha Museven, and also their most honorable son, Kainelu Gaba, the next president, and those are the words they were telling me to repeat after. Zake, Okubano Rwarelo, Todanga Mukubango Wakanya, President Webwanga Lino, Yoweli Kaguta Museveni, Janet Kataha Museveni, Wamu, no HT when you can look Muhozi President Adako, never become a gamba and you get it. Never gamba Zakene to Damu to Kuli Dango, Gambanga, Wedding, Banti Bob, Honorable Chagulani, President Adako. Again, I could see Wool of Lamu when Seno, Kubanga Chinochita and Kabutandi see, to Genda Kukula Gako. Chiche tusobola kukola kubanga mwe abaganda temuli sobola wado kufuga keberu yona 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 yona. I want to tell you this has been my fourth time when I'm being tortured. It is my fourth time as a member of parliament being tortured. The first time I'd just come to parliament during the Tojikwata call where I was tortured, you remember very well, where my head was hit. The second time, I remember all those times, actually I don't need to repeat all of them, even the one where they tiagassed my house in Mitiana, still by the same DPC, Alex Mwene, who participated a lot in my beating. Still, from there, they called Honorable Chagulani still also a dog. And one of them was mimicking him while speaking in some kind of mocking way. Mulu was a musobolok fuga, Mulu was a minachi musobolok kola, Mulu was a minachi musobolok kola, to gain a kuku kola kubanga, teri moon, to yen na yen na yen na, a sola kubanga, ye kalakasa kuduro. No one will be, demo, will be demonstrating for you because we are running the show people under lockdown. We are the only ones running the show. No one will demonstrate for you. You'll be here and no one will come for your help. I felt so bad. All that happening, friends, these people got out of that building and I remember one person ran to me and I had the voice saying Zake Tokaba Tokaba Nyomunange Bidobia Twita Mubuli Jo Zake do not cry. This is what we experience every day here. Because they had dropped me now in another place which felt like a cell. Zake Tokaba Binobia Twita Mubuli Jo Napala Nebata Niko Kubanga Baja Jendi Neba Gamba Zake this place is called same way and the torture is done from the basement. They informed me and they cried to me that Zaki for you a leader. I think you will not be kept here for so long like us. For us we've stayed here. Some of them they are telling me they were there for months, so many months, and others is for years well at that same way torture center. They really requested me that I should really help them when I'm released. That I really expose whatever is happening in that place. That at least they be released, or at least they face the court and that serve in prison, even when they committed certain crimes. That took around something like 
20 minutes or 30, these people came back. They handcuffed me. They, I mean, they removed the handcuffs from my hands. And now they put them outside. They, they put them behind my back. And that is the so called Kando Ya. They dragged me out. They put me back to the patrol. But this time, I was, face, I was facing now down. I was facing down, not like the other time when I was coming from Echiana. Well, I was facing up. This time I was facing down since that put my, they handcuffed me from behind. They still suspended me in air, like how they did it from Echiana. All that happening, they drove for some few minutes and I, they reached some other place. They still untied me, got me off the truck, they dragged me, still with beatings and everything. Beating was just happening all the time. All the kind of beating you can think of to summarize everything because now I'm really getting tired. They put me under the floor, which was, I felt, cemented. But they poured a certain chemical on me, which was, which was very cold on my hands all over the body. It made me feel so much pain, so much pain. It was very cold, and I don't know, it was meant for what purpose. But as I would try to try to, 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 to turn around, I would feel that I was under a table on a cemented ground. I shouted from there. I groaned in pain. They told me, do not shout. This is not your father's promises. Instead of concentrating to your father's business, who has become rich under the, this regime, you wouldn't be the person to actually oppose Mr. Museven. They told me so many insult friends. I can't remember. I, I, I really can remember everything, but I'm getting so tired to tell you each and everything they said, but so many insults and tribal statements. And I want to put it clear that in my whole life, I want to put it on record, I have, n I have been one of the people who have been actually talking against tribalism and any kind of skit any kind of sectarianism. And I remember also the Honorable Chagulani as our reader institutionary within our ranks. He has always been against that. In, in the morning, within that other second place, they made me join. And they are the ones who lifted me. And that was the second day. I was inside that place. They told me that that place is the one called the SIU torture chambers. Bachita Echiyumba Bo Mundomo. The Arab was so friendly to me and other captives within. I found out there were so many journalists within that place. And I want to categorically talk about one person of the Voice of Africa called Katende. Yeah, he was so friendly to me because they looked after me since that I was unable to sit, I was unable to stand, and all that they would be lifting me. They would be bringing me stuff where I can urinate from. 
they told me that those people have one meal a day of posh and beans and uh, in the morning they would be given porridge since I was so swollen with blood all over me all over my mouth this this person they called Arapi within that place could keep for me a cup of porridge which I would take in the evening when it is cold and that's what I would feed on the whole day but they told me the captives within that there is what they call interrogation and interrogation include insults beating and you would be put in a separate room you slashed you given a lot of strokes they told me all that I felt so bad because I told them what I've already passed through those captives also told me that many of them were also taken to that same way basement where they were also tortured from. I remember one Ossi in that place whom they called Ossi, the captives. He's by the names uh, Walugembe. They called him they call him Musa. I remember she she used to hand to hand me over to a man he called to SJ. And on the third day, that man when he told me that Zake you're right here, but I want, we want us to make a deal that you'll be resting for six hours and you'll be beaten for 30 minutes. And he asked me, do you agree to S.J. Hamdan speaking? At least I know the voice, even when I don't know how he looks like. But I know the voice. He has kind of... I need to hold the reserve. I can be have you get a new Murunya Kole? Nilang and Solo could be the Kerakuba, Solo Kurida. Enemy Zimu, cutting Golo. Kuban interested in Yokuberang and Manya Nemo Kuzurida. Era Awe Nini Nini Uruna Kuruk Satu Tiban Kuban Jagaloka Jukisakon Tibans Jukizanga Mun to Tate Tibat Tibatina Mun Pianina Kuban Skizanga Kundaba. Kabe wa family yangu, kabe mchala wangu, kabe tata wangu, kabe mumpi na ina yenova. Banga mbati, banga mbati, ninda kuba, banga mbati ninda kuba, sinka no muntu, nimba boza muntu choyo, ni banga mbati kona lebo muiro. Ba in Metsabo, bans trouble in Yabaminga, Bagabam, Temu, Temu, Temu Numia. Do not please hurt me. Neban Stula, Gaban Quatina Mubanga, as if Nanga Gabira could stretch about Quatanga Pavanji. Neban Quata Naya Tracy Jenga Gamba, Ah, go so look tumble, go so look tumble, away coza, Tracy Joyunga Wangamba, so look tumble, away coza Muleke, Muleke. Neban be bo Abasibabo, Basbeba Nanke. They used to feel pity of me and they never listened to him. But Nabagamba, he actually told them that to put me in a van, it was still a part, uh, 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 it was still uh, a patrol car, double cabin. So, Mr. Tracy used to force me to sit, yet I never really was able, I was never able to sit because of the numbness on my legs, even the hands. Actually, up to now, some of these fingers, they are still numb. It was very painful. He was telling me he was taking me to see Honorable Mwiru, but on the way, he told me that Zake, if you think this is just a joking matter, there is someone who wants to talk to you. And he told me that was President Museven. 
On the other side, I had a backing voice. Why don't you quit politics and concentrate on your father's business? I did not respond uh, because I was feeling so much pain because I was being forced to sit within that car and I was feeling so much pain I did not concentrate to hear whether the voice really belonged to Museven or not and I maybe I thought these are some of their techniques of torture or maybe it may be true I don't know there was from the torture chambers up to the place where he took me, it was about five minutes. And uh, reaching there, he got out, dragged me out, still forcing me to, to walk something which I was unable. The people who helped him at least to lift me by the hands in the air to take me. They made me lie on the table, just like how you saw in the court of Mitiana within their offices. They told me that that is the SIU offices. So the SIU offices within Honorable Mill came, a glimpse at me, Honorable Mill, I heard him say, oh, this is impossible. It cannot be. Is this a member of parliament? No, 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 no. Officers, please, this person needs medication. Honorable Mill realized that my lips were very, they were like wounded and I, they appeared so dry. And he told me, I think your sugar levels must be so low. You need something. She went out and came back with drinks. Trust me, the drink he gave me felt like splash something. I think it was the most ever tasteful thing I've ever had on planet Earth at that moment. I felt somehow, somehow, a little relieved. I told him the whole story about what happened to me from the time I came there. She was listening in silence, thinking that maybe I was alone. After telling him all that story, he was told to go away. Then maybe I thought, these people have come back. When Bombiron going away, I told him, please, when Bombiro, do not leave me here. Please make sure you do something. At least, please make sure whatever I've told you, you tell to Honorable Chagulani and other leaders. One of me was like, okay, it's okay, let me do my best, but it has not been easy for me to reach here because even other colleagues are outside, I've not been allowed to enter inside here. That person, Press J, I'm done, backed at me and told me, Zake, you're going to regret the reason as to why you've told whatever we've done to you to Honorable Muiru. I felt so scared. I thought this boy are not listening to me since the place was very quiet as I was telling everything to Honorable Mill. I thought they were not there. They told me you're going to face it rough. Because we made an agreement that I'm going to beat you for 30 minutes as you rest for six hours. Mr. Tracy forced me to make a statement, something I refused, which added me more punches around my body, around my head, and everywhere. He told me, you must make a statement. You must make it, you must make it. I was like, please, I need a lawyer to make a statement. Like, you will. He forced me. He was like, if you don't, you're not making a statement, I'm going to write it myself. He's going to write it himself. That's what he said. I had when he's turning pages, scratching around with something I felt like as if he's writing. After some 30 minutes, he told me, yeah, I'm now done, you're going to sign. I was like, please, please, if you've done that, you've done that by yourself, not me. He kicked and slapped me again. After some time, 
she left those things of the he didn't make me sign he didn't make me do anything she dragged me out again dragging me by the hands which were so paralyzed put me again in the waiting same double cabin patrol car she took me back where that day they kind me more than they had were doing before they kind me a lot a lot how i wish i was able to see the poor kindening me but i was unable but at least i'm sure twisty what mr twisty have done was there because i would hear his voice and i know she told me ever again you repeat this story i will kill you and will you ever oppose president musaven again you lose your life because here if you are not in agreement with that we we have all rights to take away your life like how we've done to the, those other people should tell you stories when i went back in the cell truly these people told me people with chronic diseases hiv heart diseases and many others those people would be taken and killed that's what those people told me there was a person in that cell whom they used to call a nurse he would always come to me but i never always accepted because they told me that the only thing those people give was panado they like please i need i need to be taken to hospital please help me take me to hospital you can do anything to me but please take me to hospital she refused while handling me and forcing medication to me something i did not allow i told her please how i wish i would find out your name you will be prosecuted she never cared the fourth day they told me i'm going to be taken to the hospital and they told me that i should give them someone's number i gave them my father's number who communicated to she told me communicate on the mobile and those people i found them at uh, that hospital called iran uganda i found there several colleagues but these people told me that they were being checked to see that they are not they, are, they don't have any recorder they don't have any phone to take pictures of me i remember before i was taken out, i was taken to that hospital while still in chereka i was still by that same nurse i was they took an injection i was injected by something now i believe it might have been steroids so that my swellings can reduce because they knew at that point are going to see me but the person who saw the clear picture as i told you before it is honorable muiru i remember that night is the first time my wife was allowed to see me but as entering the room where they had put me and also my personal doctor was there they checked me they examined me and everything i told them where i feel most of the pain those people were so professional the doctors of your hospital i want to thank them they were so professional because even when my wife my wife when she came in these police officers they used to be mr twcj and another one called okecho they were in that room i remember because twcj introduced introduced he told me i want to introduce to you my senior colleague called okecho those people never allowed my wife to see me that very first day they turned off the lights because i think they were fearing her to break down in tears on seeing my my face and my body how it was having the different wounds because they want 
they wanted me to those things at least first reduce down ngaba gala biso ke bikendere ko ebiwundu ebyo ko bali bankubye mpc us generalindo gendo was anti tetrahydrin steroids so that e bintu ebikendera era uradda ko na ye bambi yagalanga nyo kunaza to give me a bed bath na ye tebamuwa tebamu kiriza nga muwa privacy era yabanyunyuranga nyuna abasaba na balemera ko that please I need some privacy. I need some privacy. Mr. Tracy I need some privacy. Because for her she was the face of Mr. Tracy J. I need some privacy. Mr. Tracy J refused. He was like, we are supposed to keep in here to see everything. She was such, she was never allowed to be with her phone inside. But they would handle her phone from outside. She was allowed to be talking on phone and uh, she used to tell me that she was in communication with the Honorable Chagulanya and the wife and they were directing her on what she, should, she, she would be taking care of me and what to do. I remember, I remember one thing, that one time when, they, when she saw that she had no really privacy to bathe me, she was forced to speak in Runyankole. My wife having started from Lukunjiri, she knows the language. Mr. Tracy J, she informed me, my wife informed me that Mr. Tracy J was very happy and said to her that, oh, I'm very happy that you're part of us. Now, you know, what, you know, Bridget, I want to take you to President Museven so that you leave this shit in Uganda. Amaziga Muganda, no. He's taking you nowhere. Tugenda ku follow muga genyo to kwe wuli chimuchi wetaka. Tugenda ku damu kwa gala because bano teba ina busobozi kula banga batu jako feba na njini nse no. Feba na njini Uganda. Buhu muku fe. Tusobolo kukwela wuli chimuchi waya gala. My wife told me that since she wanted help, she just, she just not reply to him because she knew that the beatings were giving to me because they used to beat me when she's seeing. I feel I want to conclude. After some days at Iran Hospital, Iran Uganda Hospital, they told me that uh, the a pathologist to work on my eyes and they were unable to really handle my pain. So they were like, we are going to take you to another hospital. Mr. Tracy J hurried to work with the doctors who put me on a stretcher outside and they handled me so well those health workers of that place. The nurses were very good. The cleaners and some of these people, even the non-uniformed, the, 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 some of the, the junior officers whom they used to live to, to us in the room, they actually told me a secret which I want to open up right here. That is like most of the ununiformed people were always surrounding you. Those were SFC people. Era Ahunga Mamazo Kumfumia. I remember when Robo Segona was there. These people assaulted me while still putting me in their double cabin car. Honorable Segona objected all that and he read to them the doctor's referral document and was like, Just read here, this person they're saying is unable to sit, is unable to do anything, please help that you, you, you make sure that you get an ambulance. Now um, he wondered that if you're doing all this in my presence, I'm now wondering what will you be do, what have you been doing when I'm not there? So whatever happened at that moment, these guys listened. Never move, never Never solo kuanga ba funa ambulance. Na gaba te muina ambulance. Since pro bari tela ambulance. Na gam never move gamba. Ah ah ah. Within some few minutes, they were able to bring an ambulance. 
from police from police informed me by my wife. They put me in that ambulance, Mr. Tracy J. Informed me, Mr. Tracy J. was like, Mr. Tracy J is in front, he cannot see us this side, but there was a nurse of that hospital inside there. And also Mr. there was a, 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 a person who was not in uniform, taught to me by my wife. And that person was called Dan. That Dan, I would hear my wife complaining of bad touches by from Dan. So, my wife was telling this officer, you should leave me, the officer it was like, you Dan, leave me, leave me alone. Like there's nothing you can do here. They silenced her also by a slap. That was the time they were taking, taking us, thinking that they are taking us to Nsambia Hospital. They just passed through. My wife told me and the nurse who was inside there that, hey, this path just passed by this hospital in Zambia. We thought we were going to be this side. They just made sure that they rotate around town. My wife informed me that these people, I think they are getting to Mitiana for court. So, these people drove at a very terrible speed. They made sure that Honorable Seguna doesn't follow us. Told me by that, by my wife. They drove very fast up to Mitiana Court. I think most of those stories now at the Mitiana Court, then the public domain, please. I think I do not have to repeat all that that happened next. But one thing I remember, there was a, an ambulance driver who came from me, an ambulance driver came, is the one pulled off the IV line and the boat of the med and the, and the cannula, one of the cannulas, and because there were two, one of the cannulas was, he removed it with so much violence. He removed it forcefully from me. It pained me so much. They lifted me, everything I think you saw, it was in the public domain, I don't need to repeat that. But I still, we are still looking for the name of that driver's name. So, these people, I heard that I refused to sign bond papers, and that was Mr. Ochura Martin. I do not think, really, he's aware what happens in an institution he purports to lead. I do not think he knows what happens there. I want to really, really be thankful of Honorable Chagulani Sentamu and the wife who kept in communication even when he was refused to see me. Honorable Honorable Basarira Thank you so much. Honorable Karanga, thank you so much. I want also to thank my lawyers. And that is this council. Oh, this council. Yes, Elon Kiza. Yes, I want to thank you so much, Council Elon Kiza. I want to thank. Council, Council Marvin, I want to thank the Council Kamia Ibrahim. I want also to thank other lawyers from Mitiana and all those people who are able to check on me. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank so much Iran, Uganda Hospital, Honor, oh, Dr. Kato. I want to thank you so much for making a good report and doing everything you really did within the medical ethics. I want to thank where I am right now so much. I want to thank Luwaga Hospital so much. Uganda. Parliament. And the unsung hero, my wife. I'm not the hero, she's the hero. She was there for me. 
so much. I want also to thank all Ugandans home here and abroad who were able at least to do something to put pressure that I be released and be displayed to you. Something they never wanted to do because they kept me for weeks. And everything they put on me, the slashes, they are still on my on my bums, the marks. All that they did in my chest, they are still there. I'm going to show you all those things. Please, I just can't thank you enough, Ugandans. Thank you so much. I want to inform you about the way forward. I've not informed my really prosecute the same way boss and the same way boss and his deputy. The same way boss is by the names of uh, uh, and and Ho Abel Kandiho Abel. I informed my lawyers about the his deputy. That is uh, CK Asimwe. I also told them about Tracy J. Tracy J. Amadan. I also informed them about uh, uh, the same way director is called. Uh, uh, it's called. Uh, that same way boss is called. Uh, that same my boss is called uh, Eli. Eli, the other name Womanya. Yes, is it? I think that is the name Womanya. Yes. Okay, see my boss. Yes, my boss. And then also the SIU commandant. The SIU commandant. I informed my lawyers about the SIU commandant by the names of. Uh, yes, no Womanya. That is no Womanya. The same. Yes, the SIU boss. Then the. And then also I informed them about the name of uh, uh, the ambulance driver. Actually, I don't know the name as I informed you earlier, but we are still looking for that name. Please, anyone knowing the name of that ambulance, the registration number is 5713. The registration number of that ambulance, that driver, it is, that the registration number is 5713. It was taught to me by my wife. She was able to remember that person. And uh, we are still really looking out for several other names so that these people are prosecuted. And we want to see them being put. I want them to face the law. Njagala Baba take a court, Amanya Gaba, and Trouble, Nabate Zadaba lawyer, Semai Bossi, the Semai Boss. Our uh, SIU boss, the, the, the semi boss, the deputy, and the boss himself, the semi boss that that one about the names I've informed you. Obona bona na bagani balo ya bangi ba kule cheta gisa. Okula banga ba kula ko. Era namba tegeza na manyaga ba arapisi na wobe nyine 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 kuba they initiated my torture, and the arapisi's name I remember it so well I can't forget that name. It is Bob Kagalula. And also, the DPC, Muine, Alex Mukono. I remember it so well. Those people, I've already informed my lawyers, if not today, tomorrow, the case must be locked in very fast. Because I really see these people face the law. I want them to be prosecuted. So, I think, comrades, I need to rest. Okay. Um,